images. So what I'm going to do right now is just give you a basic overview of how, if you're going to capture images yourself, um, these are some of the things you're going to have to do. And so I'm going to share my screen. And if everyone could see that, this is actually the image of the setup that I have right behind me, but at the photographer's view. So what you're seeing is how you can do this without having a fancy photography studio. I do, but that's not where I'm broadcasting from. We're doing this right here so that I can show you how you can do this in your home. And one of the most important things that you're going to have to have is good tools. And that starts with the camera. What kind of camera are you using? Do you have a good digital camera? or are you using your cell phone? Now using your cell phone is fine if it's a really good camera and you can adjust some of the settings on it. But what is most important is the stand. It's the stabilizer. You need to have something to stabilize either your camera or your camera phone. And you can find these at, you know, on Amazon or anywhere online for both your camera or your a camera phone. The other most important thing is the space that you choose. Make sure that it's a space that doesn't have any harsh direct lighting coming from any direction. If there is a window in that room, it should be behind you and you should be able to close curtains or close blinds so that you don't get any unwanted light spots on your artwork. Now your artwork itself should be placed on either a neutral colored wall or as you see here with a nice backdrop and it should always be upright. Never take a picture of your artwork on an angle either forward, backward or from one side or the other. It's going to change the perspective of the artwork in the image and you won't be able to crop it to a true uh, size, especially for printing out on prints on demand. So you want to make sure you can make it upright. And you can do that with an upright easel or just take some apparatus to make sure that that, it, that canvas is upright. Now you see I have a drop cloth on the back here. And this is important and it's real important that this be a very neutral color. And one of the best colors is gray because gray does not reflect back onto the artwork. If you have an oil painting, an acrylic, or anything that has maybe some glossy areas, like the dark areas can sometimes be glossier than the rest. If this were a red drop cloth, that red would reflect back on that painting. Even a white drop cloth can reflect onto dark areas and cause them to be lighter in the image than you want them to be. So I would suggest using gray or a beige or even black is okay to use because it doesn't really reflect the same way white would do. But what is also really good about gray is that when you capture your image and you're looking at it in your photo program, you wanna look to see that that gray background is still gray. If it is, then you know right off the bat that your color capture is true. If that gray background looks bluish or purplish, then you need to go in and check your colors because what happens is gray will appear blue or purple if there's too much red tone, if there's too much blue tone, if there's too much green tone. So you can adjust your camera settings, or if you are, you know, know how to do this, you can go into your Photoshop program and adjust it there. The next thing you need is lighting. And I would absolutely urge everyone, if you're going to be photographing your own uh, artwork to invest in umbrella lights. And the reason being is because these are going to, uh, it, they're going to reflect soft, light that covers the entire canvas. You're not going to have one side that's brighter than the other. You're not going to have spots. 
the way they work is the light is shown at the umbrella and it's reflected back on your artwork so you get this real nice even lighting and you can see that from the screen of the camera this is exactly how it's going to appear when it's when the photograph is taken so the light is very very good now a lot of people recommend taking your photographs outside which is fine the problem with that is it has to be a cloudy day. You cannot take pictures of artwork, especially paintings, outdoors on a sunny day because the light from the sun is going to alter reds. It's going to alter blues. It's going to cause dark shadows in some places, or it's going to wash out other places. So if you're going to be doing this professionally, that you, you, know, you want to sell your art as your profession, I would say have an area designated set up so that you can yourself do your own photography if that's what you want to do. Now, the, another thing you need to know is about your settings. If you're using a digital camera, your settings should be, the ISO should be set at 100 to 200, and your aperture should be F8 to F11. Now, most cameras have a portrait setting on them so that if you don't know how to set your ISO or your aperture, just look for the portrait setting because those are usually preset at those that at that IO, at ISO and that aperture. The same with your cell phone. If you're using your uh, camera phone, find the portrait setting because that's probably going to be set because most portraits are taken indoors under umbrella lights. So it's already set for you. The other thing I have to tell you is do not crop your images on your camera. Do not crop and adjust your images on your cell phone. And I'm going to show you why. Right here, I have two images of that painting. Now, these that you're looking at right now are probably even a little bit larger than you would see in your viewfinder of the camera or on your camera phone. And they both look fine. You know, they look like they're cropped fine and they don't look like there's anything wrong with them. But I'm going to show you what happens when I blow these up to the actual view. This image is very, very blurry, as you could see in this actual view. And that is what's going to happen when. If you want to utilize something like prints on demand, this image is going to be rejected because while it looked fine to you in your phone, it's not fine at all. It's blurry. And not only is it blurry, but as you can see, when you go edge to edge, which is what you really need to do when you're scrutinizing your own photographs before you post them, you can see the background is showing through behind this canvas. So this is really not a usable image, even though it looked fine when we first saw it. Now this one is much sharper. You could see all the detail work, which is really, really great. So you see all the, the palette knife work, you see all the beautiful colors, but look, again, you can see the background of the can of behind the canvas peeking through. So this too would be rejected and you just would not see that unless you can project your image on a large screen so that you can scrutinize it from edge to edge.